Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Angela Braniff, and today I'm gonna to be answering y'all's questions about intermittent fasting. I did a video the other day where I shared with you guys the one thing I changed that finally allowed me to lose the last bit of uh, baby weight, postpartum baby weight that I really wanted to lose. And I had asked you guys on Instagram for questions. Then I got a little talkative in my video, which is no surprise if you've been around here, that is very much my way. And I didn't want the video to be too long, so I decided to break the Q&A portion up into a second video. So that is what I'm gonna to do today is tackle all of these questions y'all had about intermittent fasting um, it's a lot so I'm probably not gonna be able to get to all of them but we are gonna go ahead and jump in uh, lots of questions about what I'm actually eating during my eating window I did kind of address that in the previous video that right now I'm just kind of focusing on healthy foods I do still eat mostly gluten-free not totally gluten-free like I said I don't have a gluten allergy I just kind of have an intolerance so I can eat a little bit of it here and there but if I eat too much of it then my stomach starts to hurt I get really bloated and I can't go to the bathroom and it ain't pretty so I try to avoid gluten. Other than that, I eat very normally and I don't really deprive myself. Like if I really want some candy or if I really want a cupcake or whatever it is, I'm gonna eat it. Leave me a comment down below if you guys wanna see like a what I eat in a day video. I always feel weird sharing those because I know people are so weird about that kind of stuff. Um, but I, I will do it for you guys because I love you. If you really wanna see it, um, it's not super exciting. I don't have like a grandiose healthy meals that I eat, but I will often eat very basic things like an egg on toast, on gluten-free toast. Sometimes I do eat sourdough bread now because I've discovered that I can eat sourdough bread without my stomach hurting. Um, I'll sometimes do avocado toast. Uh, sometimes I do sausage and spinach. I, I have kind of my go-tos that are quick and easy. And then I just kind of snack or whatever. It really just depends on what we're doing. I, I eat a lot of nuts. Um, I like peanut butter. I do eat some hummus every now and again. And then I eat whatever we're having for dinner pretty much. So like I said, sometimes it looks like, oh, really healthy. And then other times it does not. And I will eat, you know, a gluten-free pizza or something like that, or I'll eat something from fast food. And I just, I just don't stress about it. For me, you know, that's really kind of part of the beauty of intermittent fasting and of doing this is that I don't feel like I have to stress as much about it. I can go out with my girlfriends and have a, like a chimichanga, like a fried chicken burrito thing for dinner um, and maybe a margarita or something like that. And the next day I'm just kind of back on track and it's all fine. Like it doesn't, it, it doesn't feel like oh, I've broken my meal plan like some other diets can, which I think is part of the reason that I enjoy it so much and it works so well for me. Again, somebody asked for research articles, books behind the science, worried it's a fad. I totally get that and respect that. Like I said, I had linked an article from Healthline in the last video, but I can link a few more in the description box if you wanna do some more research. And as always, please, 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 don't just take my word for anything. If this sounds interesting to you, but you feel like, well, I don't know, I don't trust that redheaded broad, then do your own research, talk to your doctor and decide if it's right for you. I feel like I sound like an infomercial for Cialis. But the point is, please, I, I, I'm not giving you health advice in any way. I'm just telling you what's worked for me. Talk to your doctor, okay. What is your eating window and have you decreased calorie intake? Like I said, I usually do a 16-8, so usually, or somewhere around there. So usually I stop eating around 6.30 or 7, and I don't start eating again until 11.30, 12.30, sometimes one. Like sometimes that that window will flex. Like if I'm hardcore in schooling with the kids and I'm not done, and we don't get done until 12.45, then that's usually when I eat. Because honestly, I make my coffee and then I'm doing school with the kids all morning, so I'm just sipping on my black coffee and I do want to say because someone I feel like I saw that question in here getting used to drinking black coffee it takes time give yourself grace initially it's like drinking car oil it's not fun it's difficult it's difficult especially if you are somebody who buys really sugary drinks at Starbucks like you are a uh, somebody who goes and buys the seasonal drinks and doesn't ask them to cut back on the syrup but if you are somebody that like loves those, it's gonna be a little harder for you. I actually went through a phase over the last few years where I've slowly gone from, I don't put sugar in my coffee at all anyways. So I had cut that out already. So I was just doing um, coffee with a little bit of almond milk or a little splash of cream or something like that. So I'd already gotten to that place and then it was like, okay, removing the, the little splash of cream. But if you're somebody that dunks in a whole bunch of those like international delights, it's gonna be a learning curve to get to black coffee. But again, 
like I said in my last video, that was the one thing that made the difference for me or that continues to make the difference for me. And the other thing that I probably should have mentioned in the last video is for me, once I go into like maintaining and I'm not worried about trying to lose weight and I'm just maintaining, then I can absolutely do a little bit of cream in my coffee in the morning and it's not that big of a deal every once in a while um, I don't stress about that like when I, if I'm with a friend and we're traveling and we go to get coffees I'm gonna get a coffee um, it's just for me that part of the reason this has worked so well is that it's just it's kind of stress-free it's not super rigid the other thing I want to mention is that there is an app that I used in the beginning to help me. I think it's called Zero, and it just helps you track your window. You just kind of tell it to start, stop, and it helps you track your window. It helps you see what your windows have been over time, um, especially if you decide you want to kind of mix it up on your body a little bit and maybe mix in some 12-12s or some 20s, like 20 and four, like you can break up that window or you can do 24, 24s. Like people get hardcore with it and they'll do, uh, you know, a day of eating and a day of not eating. Like I'm, I'm it's not that serious for me. I'm not doing that. I'm going to eat every single day. <laughs> Any tips against the snacking desire, it's hard. I think the biggest thing that helps that is making sure that when you're in your eating window, you're eating really good, healthy foods, nutrient dense foods, things that are filling you up. If you're just like gnawing on some salad and hoping that's gonna hold you over, it's not. So you gotta get some protein in there, whether you're a vegan, vegetarian, or carnivore, you just gotta get some protein in there, some things that are really gonna fill you up during your eating window so that when you enter in your fasting window, you're okay. And it takes a little bit of time, but then your body gets used to it. And I find that it's a lot easier. Like I just know that dinner is done and I am done eating for the night. And I don't allow myself to go to the pantry and snack or look at the foods and be like, oh, I wish I could sit down with that box of Cheez-Its right now. There are obviously like habits and things involved. So if you're somebody that sits down in the evening and you're used to snacking and watching TV, it's gonna be like, you're gonna to have to retrain a lot there. It takes time, give yourself grace and get there slowly. Don't make it like this, I've gotta lose 10 pounds in the first month kind of a thing. Um, how do you not feel starving, lethargic, and get a headache when you're fasting? Because I don't do, I like I said, I don't do 24 hour fasts. I don't get a headache because I'm, I'm still having coffee in the mornings. Um, so usually I just get a headache if I don't have caffeine, which don't I yes I know that's a problem don't don't take my coffee away from me okay you can take a lot but don't take my coffee I just don't like I said that was very natural way of eating for me and I will also say that intermittent fasting is not my holy grail be all end all of everything if I wake up one day and I am really hungry that day from the moment I wake up then I will just say to myself either I'm going to shift my eating window or I'm not going to worry about it today and I'm just going to eat I don't, um, I, I don't ever want to, because I have struggled in the past with disordered eating, which I've talked about this, you know, in the other video and this one, if you have, you need to talk to your doctor. Uh, so I'm very careful of that. And if I feel like it's ticking that little thing in my brain, I will just say, nope, not, not worrying about it today. I'm going to eat. So that's, that's, for me, that's how I handle it. And maybe part of the reason why for me, this has been an overtime thing with this weight loss. You know, my twins are two and a half years old and I really started doing the clean fasting in like May or June. And it's, you know, it's, it's a long process because I do go through periods where my mental health kind of hits a place that I need to not worry about anything. When we first adopted Benjamin, the first few months that he was uh, home, I didn't, I didn't, worry about anything when it came to intermittent fasting. I just ate and whatever. I did gain weight, um, but when I was ready and mentally ready, I went back to the intermittent fasting and lost the weight lickety split. For what it's worth, mental health always comes before any kind of like diet or exercise or eating plan in my opinion. Uh, how soon postpartum did you start? Like I said, I didn't really start doing this until the twins were probably, I can't remember when I started intermittent fasting. I wanna say the twins were like a year and a half, but I didn't discover the clean fasting until they were uh, almost two years old. So part, again, postpartum, if you're breastfeeding and everything, you really want to you really want to talk to someone and, and figure that stuff out because you don't want to have it affect your milk supply. Um, my sister did it while she was breastfeeding, so she might have some more insight on that um, because obviously I didn't I wasn't breastfeeding anymore, so I didn't have to worry about it affecting my milk supply. In the beginning, did you struggle with forgetting you were fasting and eat something without thinking? Yes, I have done that multiple times, and you literally have this moment where you're like, <laughs> like what if I spit it back out? Um, Again, that's why I say like, you just gotta like, 
give yourself grace, relax. It's not the end of the world. Either continue on as if it didn't happen or scrap it for the day. Uh, where did you find information about intermittent fasting, helpful sites or people to follow? Um, like I said, I initially heard about it through um, a friend that was doing the Faster Way to Fat Loss program. Now they do intermittent fasting combined with certain exercises as well as like an eating plan during your eating window. That's why I couldn't stick to it. But I do know a lot of women that have had a lot of success using the Faster Way to Fat Loss. And of course, they have a whole like Instagram community and stuff like that. I didn't follow anybody This like, I think that's why it worked for me, y'all, is because this was something that I did that I didn't tell a bunch of people I was doing it and post updates every day on Instagram and say, this is what I'm eating and here's my workout. And like, I didn't do that. I just very privately put my head down and, and did it. Just tried this eating style, method, lifestyle. Cause for me, it's a lifestyle. Like I, I will probably maintain this for a really, really long time, maybe the rest of my life because the other health benefits aside from weight loss are so good. And it's such a natural way for me to eat that I can't see myself changing it anytime soon uh, unless there were to be some kind of health issue or something. Um, but it just works for me. So no, I didn't follow a bunch of people, but there are groups out there. If you're somebody that really, really needs that accountability and stuff, there are groups out there. For me, this time, it just worked to kind of fly solo. Can, should a teenager do it? Again, talk to your doctor. I. I'm so weary of like discussing anything related to like dieting or whatever, especially when it comes to children, teenagers or children. Um, so talk to your doctor, talk to your ch talk to your child's doctor about it and see. Trying to lose weight after twins, new twin mom here, was that helpful? Well, congratulations on your twins. Twins are magical. I love, love, love having twins. Um, and it did, it really, it helped me a lot. It, I, like I said, my journey to weight loss after my twins has been a very, very long road, but I wish that I could go back to the beginning when they were eight weeks old and I was struggling and try this instead of just cutting out gluten and dairy and trying to eat healthier. Like it just felt like, well, oh, kind of felt, I don't know. I just felt like it was very, very slow going, which maybe that was just what was best. But part of me wishes I could go back and just do this from the get go. I think it would have been probably better and easier for me. How long ish till you started seeing weight loss related progress within a few days? The, especially with bloating. If you struggle with bloating, that was where initially I noticed the difference. Even before the scale was changing, I could see it. I could see the bloating going down. Um, and like I said, that's just, that was one of my biggest struggles before was like inflammation and bloating. And I do like lymphatic drainage massages and those help as well. But this like kicked it up a notch. What was the hardest part about it? Was there anything unexpected about it, difficult or positive? Um, I think really fully recognizing your habits. Like I said, I, th I think a lot of us have a habit of eating late at night, um, you know, after dinner, sitting on the couch or eating that, you know, midnight or 11 o'clock bowl of cereal or something like that. And really breaking those habits was a little bit harder. Like I said, the morning time is easier for me because it just feels natural, but the evening was breaking habits of snacking in the evening. Um, because who doesn't love to walk into the pantry and grab a handful of goldfish or something at 11 o'clock at night before you go up to bed? Like that's just, it's a habit, you know? Um, so breaking those habits was probably uh, one of the hardest parts for me. Again, any questions like, is it a suitable option for people with chronic heartburn and indigestion? Talk to your doctor. I, I can't, like I'm not, a, um, I'm not a rep for intermittent fasting. I just, it's just something that worked for me. Definitely talk to your doctor about any kind of questions you have related to your own health or health issues and doing fasting. Do you still drink coffee, cream, coconut oil in it? Um, I do still drink coffee, like I said, black during my my fasting window, that was the, the biggest thing, black coffee during my fasting window. And you bet your hiney, I am in the kitchen right at the time that my fasting window is over and it's my feasting window and I'm pouring some cream into my coffee. Like I usually break my fast with, oftentimes it's a combination of something to eat, whether that be something healthy, a smoothie, a snack, and also coffee with cream. Because by now I want some coffee with cream. Do you do anything different during ant flow time? Yes, I struggle immensely. Um, I am somebody that was like very snacky and hungry during that time. Like I said, for me, it's a little bit of an, an intuitive eating. If I really feel like I'm really, really hungry, then I just say screw it for the day and I eat what, not eat whatever, but I allow myself not to worry about the 
the fasting window and I just eat, especially when it's the ant flow time and you're already feeling crabby and cranky. And the truth is, as much as society likes to make us seem like wackadoodles, our hormones are up or our blood volume is, we're losing blood volume. We're losing blood to the brain. Um, there are lots of physiological things happening during the time when you are on your period. And so I just like to give myself lots of grace. Like homegirl can just, you can just have, just have that biscuit. Don't eat, just have the biscuit. Do you fast seven days a week or do you give yourself a break on weekends? I do this every day unless it's a mental health reason that I feel like it's not a good time for me to do it or a good day. Or like I said, if something really just comes up, but no, I'm, I'm seven days a week. Uh, like for example, this past weekend, I did a work like mastermind and we were meeting uh, pretty early in the morning and we were going to be working all day and into the evening. And so uh, one of the days I started, like I opened my window at 10 instead of noon. And then the next day I ended up not opening my window until noon, but we, we're eating until probably eight or nine o'clock at night. So it was a little longer on either side. So I'm just, I'm very, very flexible with it. If you're like an intense place where you're really trying to lose a lot of weight, then obviously you might not be able to be as flexible. But like I said, that's probably why it took me a little longer because I wanted that flexibility in my life. I don't want something rigid that I can't stick to. Um, I, I know it's like a joke and a funny meme about being hangry, but I have been that way since I was a kid. My parents have this ongoing joke that it was like, if Angie was really acting terrible, they would be like, go go get her some chicken nuggets, go through McDonald's, get her some chicken nuggets, we need to feed the kid. Because it was just like my blood sugar would drop and my whole demeanor would change. And I'm still that way now. And my husband, God bless his little heart, recognizes it too. And he's even found nice ways to say things like, do you need to eat? Which initially makes your like head spin around and you're like, do I need to eat? <sighs> but I've gotten to the point where I'm like, okay, you're right. I'm kind of being a little bit of a bee scratch. So yes, I think I do need to eat. So, and I meant to say this in the last video too, that a lot of people ask if you think this negatively affects your metabolism and the research shows that it actually helps your metabolism. So. I, like I said, I'm not sure either way. My metabolism is slow as a snail all the time. If my metabolism took a life form, it would be like a sloth. So I don't feel like intermittent fasting has hurt my metabolism in any way. I guess maybe it's made it better because I do feel like on the days when I, I do kind of not follow the fasting plan or whatever, or eat something maybe I wouldn't normally, it's, it's not so bad. The effects are not so bad. If you have a really busy day, how do you make sure to get enough food during your eating window? That can be hard too. Um, it can be hard because you'll start to, you'll eat a little something. And then if you end up with a really busy afternoon, then you don't eat again until dinner. And I don't know. I just feel like I get to the place where I know that I've consumed enough calories. My body feels good. I don't feel run down. I don't feel lethargic. I don't feel tired and I don't count calories. I just get to that place where I feel it. Like I know I'm like, I'm okay. I, or sometimes I end up like eating a lot of dinner and then going, all right, I need to go to the pantry and eat a few more little somethings because I know I just didn't eat enough earlier today. All right, last question I'll answer is, do you exercise along with intermittent fasting? I have, I'm not currently, it's winter here and my favorite form of exercise is to run, but I really wanna get um, to at least walking and moving my body for 30 minutes to an hour every day. That's kind of something that I've been wanting to get back to, but again, I'm in a phase of my life with, like I said, eight kids, a business to run, homeschooling, and a, a, you know, a new baby, so I do, I very much believe in like giving yourself grace in different periods of your life. And I'm not in a period of my life where I'm just gonna like lace up the running shoes and go out um, because it's it's not high on the priority list to me right now. But I want to get back into moving my body because I know how much that can help mentally. And I just, I do enjoy it. So it's on my list, especially now that my baby is sleeping more um, and life is kind of shaking out to like some kind of a normal schedule. Now I do want to add back in exercise, but uh, exercise is very hit or miss for me throughout this process. There were periods of intense exercise over the last two and a half years of losing this weight. There were periods I was training for uh, a half marathon and I would run, you know, 20 miles a week. And then there's been periods where I don't do any exercise. So I think that's why I like this style of eating or, you know, whatever so much is because it doesn't seem to be exercise dependent for me and it, and it still works. So like I said in my last video, this is not, I'm not a doctor. I'm not trying to give you medical advice. I'm not trying, even trying to give you like health advice. I'm just trying to share with y'all what I do, what has worked for me. 
because I've seen so many other benefits besides just weight loss, that's why I felt compelled, if you will, to share with you guys about this and talk to you guys about it because it's just been such a great thing for me. So if it's something you're interested in, you still have more questions, do some research, talk to your doctor, uh, do not take the crazy lady on the internet's word for it. Gotta do your own research. So that's it for today's video, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you made it all the way to the end, bravo, you get a gold star. I always appreciate when someone can manage to sit through this much time of me talking. You guys are the real MVPs. That is it for today's video. Be sure to subscribe to my channel if you want more. We're gonna be doing a lot of budgeting and meal planning content, so that'll show you a little bit more of what we eat. I think the next video that will go up after this is the next installment of the Declutter series. So if you're into decluttering, the next video will be your jam. That's all coming up, so subscribe if you've not already, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and I will see you guys again very soon. Bye.